Hey, traders, Akil Stokes here, and welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. It is my pleasure to join you once again for episode 51, where we're going to talk a little bit about being properly motivated. But first, if you guys are listening or I guess watching, watching, listening on YouTube, uh, do be aware that you can access and listen to this podcast almost everywhere else um, as far as music and podcast apps go. For example, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, um, Podcast, CastBox, whatever it's called iHeartRadio, almost everywhere else you can listen to this podcast as well. So you do not have to watch on YouTube, but feel free if you want to. I know a lot of you guys do. I'm in an interesting situation right now, and I can't really figure out the reasoning behind it. You can, you, you see, lately, I've been getting a massive amount of new friend requests on the Facebook, and I can't figure out why. Now, I've been, I, I guess you can call it a public figure. Um, sounds weird saying that, but I guess I've been a public figure now for a while. And just like I, I know my numbers in trading, I know my numbers as far as the business goes too, and kind of uh, what I should be expecting as far as the, the consistent drips of new friend requests or friend requests and messages and when we have the big floods right typically you have these big floods after big events like webinars or when you do a, a guest podcast or a guest article something like that aside from that you have a consistent drip of new followers and, and whatnot but recently i've been getting probably about 20 new friend requests a day and I haven't really done anything special. I mean, aside from the fact that the Trading Coach podcast has been going amazing, right? We just finished episode 50. We're nearing in on 150,000 downloads. We are the number seventh ranked Forex trading podcast on Apple. So maybe that's it. Or maybe I caught the attention of a certain internet marketer a network marketer whatever it's called and now all of their friends are kind of uh following up and and trying to request me and and sell me and i, and I i'm leaning more towards the latter uh, mainly because i've gotten a lot of messages of people trying to sell me stuff people trying to get me to join their network promising that they can fulfill my trading dreams and help me become a successful trader. Obviously, they haven't done the research, which is offensive, um, not to me, but the people that do that type of stuff always do your research before kind of reaching out and selling yourself to a client. If you didn't hear the last uh, podcast episode on how to attract investors, this was the very same subject that stemmed um, kind of the response that Jason Greystone gave you. But What's interesting is this, right? Every time I get, and, and, and I don't mind it, right? I don't, hey, people run your business. I don't hate on any business. Um, you know, I sold knives, so I did commission stuff before where I was going door to door and all this stuff. Um, I did the same thing when I was uh, getting started in managing money where I, I would I would do a presentation for one person, get a list of referrals, and then cold call that list of refer referrals and try to convince them to do something that they weren't willing to do. And not, not convince, but share them on the opportunity uh, to become a client and whatnot and give me the opportunity to manage their money. So I understand how it works. If you do it, you just have to do it in a respectful way. And what I'm noticing with a lot of these people, and it's a lot of younger people too, and this is how you know I'm getting old, I'm starting to get angry at younger people. These younger people have no respect, right? Um, the number one selling point for them is making money. And I know that because the last person I spoke to who was uh, telling me how he can make me a successful trader was asking, hey, how would you like to make five figures daily? <laughs> and you know that that's the immediate response I gave. Ha 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 ha. Funny. You immediately lose all credibility when I hear that. But again, if I don't know you, I, I can't assume you're not making that. But that's not the right way to sell you to sell me. But it brings me back to that 
many traders are getting caught in these kind of these multi-level marketing schemes because of the promise of money. And it caused me to think about what is the true motivation. If you guys watched the, the latest Trading Edge video I did, episode 107, over the weekend, I wore a pretty cool shirt purposely that said, driven by money, right? And the word money was crossed out. And underneath that was purpose. And I've always believed that if you want to be successful long term, you have to be motivated by things other than money. You have to be motivated by purpose. And it's a fine line because I'm also a firm believer in money can buy happiness. Money is a tool where if used correctly, it could be used in order for you to fulfill that purpose, right? Um, if you have intentions of giving to charities or, or building a church, something like that, obviously it takes money to do that. So I'm not saying money isn't significant, but it can't be the number one motivator. And I've always heard this, right? I, you know, we heard the saying money, money buys happiness, whatever like that, or money can't buy happiness, but we believe money buys happiness. But there has been a massive amount of research done over the years that proves after a certain level of income, the amount of happiness that your money brings you starts to decrease. And this is going to be different by, by country, by, by continent, by country, by state, by city. But I know here in America, the, the kind of the, the medium price was $75,000, right? Once you make over $75,000 a year, the amount of happiness that comes because of how much money you're making starts to decrease because uh, um, $75,000 a year is kind of that comfort level where you shouldn't really have any worries in life, right? You're not, you know, buying yachts and, and all that fancy stuff and living like a millionaire, but you don't have to worry about rent. You don't have to worry about mortgage. You don't have to worry about bills. You have some set aside if you're financially responsible, right? $75,000 a year should be enough for you to comfortably get through life. So it eliminates a lot of those stressors that come with living paycheck to paycheck, needing to pay this bill, uh, needing to pay rent, worried if the car is going to be taken away, right? It eliminates all of that. And when you eliminate stress, you become more happy. And what my fear is with a lot of the people that are driven by money is that once they reach that level of happiness, no matter what you know monetary number that is, right? Whether it's seventy five thousand, whether it's a hundred thousand dollars, but once they reach that level of happiness, where where money stops providing the same type of feeling, my fear is that you will then settle. And when you settle, you're essentially going backwards, right? I'm a track coach, right? So I, I, I watch a lot of races. I, I assist and coach with, uh, mainly a sprints coach, but I, um, I help out with the cross country team as well. And imagine life being like a marathon, right? And there's thousands of people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people running this race, right? In order to be at the front of that race, right? You can ask any runner, you have to stay aggressive the entire time smart but aggressive and one of the things i always shout at my track and field athletes is don't settle because as soon as you settle as soon as you kind of lock into that comfort zone and you're kind of content with where you're at right yes you're still moving in the right direction but that's when other people are starting to pass you and in the real world once you settle if we want to make this specific to trading once you settle in trading that's when the market is going to move past you. And that's when you're going to start going backwards. And it may not seem like it, but I, I, I promise it's 100% true. And, and I know this because I've spoken to traders that have been successful, successful for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden given all of it back. Because it takes a massive amount of preparation. It takes a massive amount of work to be a successful trader. We look at teams like the New England Patriots, right, who have had an historic run of being great. I don't even remember when they started. I was in high school when they started winning championships. But they've been one of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in the league, for what, probably the last 10, 15 years? Now, let me ask you this. If you, if you were able to get a look behind the scenes, I know Bill Belichick doesn't let anyone behind the scenes, but if you were to get a look behind the scenes, how do you think they prepare? Do you think they've settled in on being good and just kind of go through the motions? 
Or do they work even harder each day because they don't want to give any of that back? And the answer is they work even harder each day. And as traders, that will, that's what we have to do. It's hard to earn success. It's even harder to maintain that success because it's very easy to settle, right? We teach traders to trade basically robotically, meaning we have, uh, we have them develop a set trading plan with set trading rules, and then we work on trading psychology in order to consistently follow those rules, right? Consistent analysis plus consistent execution equals consistent profits. But there's another part to that as well. That's consistent review. And that's the behind the scenes work of evaluating your trading, evaluating yourself, evaluating your system, and making sure that you're adjusting as the markets adjust. Even if you're rules-based, if you just settle in and say, okay, well, I've got the magic system. I'm just going to do the same thing every day. There's a chance that you're going to settle. You're not going to attack and approach the same way when you were, when you were young and hungry and fighting and, and clawing and scraping for that success. And if it's that type of action, that type of motivation, that type of mentality that earns you success in the first place, what do you think is going to happen when you stop? You're going to start going backwards. And I had that happen in my trading career before. I had that happen even with, with let's, let's just talk money in general. You see, my, my entire life, I've always gotten by by just being a hard worker. My whole mentality is that I'm going to outlast anybody next to me. Right? I even, I even keep that now, right? People ask, well, Keo, what if you ever get attacked by a bear, right? If I'm with four friends, guess what? I'm not going to lose because I'm going to outlast my other four friends. The bear is going to get them first. Bad example, but that's my mentality, right? I'm going to outlast and outwork everyone. And you're going to have to do something crazy to beat me. And, and, and that's my work mentality. And that's how I knew to got by, get by. I was never the smartest, uh, you know, so effort. And I remember when I first started making real money. And I'm talking like six-figure stuff, right? I'm not, I'm not talking like, you know, $30,000, which I got coming out of college, which I was really, really happy and grateful for working three jobs, more money than I've ever seen. I'm talking about once I got my trading business started and I started making happiness money, right? Above that 75000 level where it just stopped becoming more happy, right? What I found was that I kind of lost my edge. I was so intent on getting to a certain number, right? A, a six-figure goal for, I don't know what reason, just sound like a good goal, that once I got there, I kind of took a breath and said, huh, I made it. This is it. It will last forever. And I stopped working as hard as I did before because I just assumed that I can be on coast mode. And there were some circumstances that happened where essentially a massive amount of that money was taken away. I'll tell you guys, there was a broker I was involved with who I had my money with that ended up being, um, basically he was scamming his clients out of money. There's a lot of lies on the ledger. So boom, there goes the trading account. Gone, wiped out. Not only that, but the trading accounts for the clients I was uh, managing as well, boom, wiped out. Not all of them, but a few, wiped out. And I still don't know if this is a good decision up to this day, uh, but I, I, I feel right by it, so I guess it is. What I decided to do is I decided to repay those clients their money, which left me in a big hole. And I know it may sound weird, but that was probably one of the best moments of my life because it took me from a level where I had worked extremely hard, gotten to a level, had gotten comfortable, ready to coast through life, back to square one. And it was that fall from, not from greatness, but I guess what I perceived as greatness, that really humbled me gave me perspective of boom it could be taken away that quickly i 
I've never settled after that moment. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in past podcasts, but that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is, is, is failing. And it's not even failing as far as the money goes, right? Because I have a skill. I have the skill of analyzing and creating profit or extracting profit from the market. So there's always a way to make money back. That's, that's not a, a problem. But my fear is not achieving my longer term goals, my purpose goals. It's not, it's not, it's not the money, it's the purpose. Being able to make a certain amount of charitable donations a year. Which after that drop, I wasn't able to do. Being able to create an empire on the real estate side of things. So that my my kids, soon to be kids and hopefully grandkids can inherit. And have a business that they can manage and, and use to provide them income. That was the motivation. And once I pulled myself back out of that hole, right, once I got more into the educational side of things, there was even more purpose. The purpose became even greater. It wasn't just about myself. It wasn't just about my family. Now it's about helping others. It's about working with hundreds of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of traders. Probably just should have said thousands. Thousands and thousands of traders from hundreds of different countries around the world and helping them achieve the same things that I achieved, helping them achieve the same purposeful goals that they want to achieve. And we have these accountability sessions every every Friday, and, and it's really fun talking to these traders to to see what really motivates them. And for all the traders we work with, we, we work with a very specific type of trader. We don't work with your typical internet trader. We work with, you know, I like to say real people, right? And when I say internet type of trader, I don't, I don't mean everyone, but you know, the people out there trying to scam you. We work with, with real people that have real goals. And I, I love hearing what their goals are. And none of them have been strictly about money. It's all about purpose. I want to achieve this. Therefore, I want to learn the skill of trading so that it can be used to achieve this, right? And I think as long as you have that purpose, you will be properly motivated. As long as you have that purpose, you won't kind of fall into that trap of settling because now, right, now your goals aren't necessarily tied up in a very specific monetary value. You don't hit a certain per year mark and just say, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm cool. Your goals are, are bigger. They're deeper. Some of them well beyond reach, but you keep reaching for them, try to get closer and closer and closer. And those are the goals that keep you going. Those are the goals that keep you motivated. Those are the goals that keep you hungry no matter how successful you become.